<laughs> Today we have Jonathan, who's a friend of mine who studies natural sciences, who I believe was top in the UK in chemistry. Uh, she's very impressive and I've got all sorts of questions uh, for you. Uh, so you competed in the International Chemistry Olympiad. Uh, can you tell me what that is? So it's an uh, international competition for uh, sixth form age students, mostly upper sixth, um, from all around the world. It has two parts. There's a practical exam and a theoretical exam. And, um, you know, you go to a country and you compete with all these other students. And that's about it. Okay, that's really cool. And is there only like uh, top four people per country normally? Is that the idea? Yeah, there's a W team of four uh, okay. per country, which is selected via different processes per country, but usually the country's Olympiads, mm. followed by selection camps, training camps, things like that. Mm. Can you tell me a bit more about the selection process? Well, there's the um, national sort of chemistry Olympiad, which is geared towards upper sixth form students, but lower sixth students can take it. Mm -hmm. And the best uh, 20, 30 odd people, based on their marks in that, get taken to a, a selection camp and there, there's a shorter theoretical and a shorter practical exam. And from that, they pick the best four who go on to do further sort of training and preparation for the overall Olympiad, which happens in the summer, just before you go to university, mostly. Okay, I guess if you're really smart, though, you could go before you're like in year 13. Uh, people have gone in the lower sixth, yeah. Uh, one of the people on the team I was on when uh, the previous year as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, people can take the Olympiad at any age, but uh, generally, obviously, the level of knowledge and experience you have gives you an advantage when you're in the upper sixth compared to the previous year. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. How do you recommend preparing for the Olympiad? Well, there's a similar competition geared towards lower sixth form students. So it's always worth trying to take that if you can, mm -hmm. uh, or at least looking at the papers, because trying to take the competition geared towards upper sixth form students yeah. when you're in the lower sixth, mm -hmm. you won't know, you know, oh, which bits are just missing knowledge and which bits are places that you need to improve on. Yeah. But uh, of course, you can always look at the uh, overall upper sixth papers whenever you want, and it's certainly worth trying to get a hold of the um, papers. I think you can find them online, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm as well as the answers mm -hmm. and that's really all you can do to prepare. Okay, so. and how would you describe your experience of the uh, Olympiad? It was really, really fun. I really enjoyed myself, not just on the International Olympiad, obviously, which was just a whole experience. You got to go to another country, in my case, the Czech Republic and Slovakia, mm -hmm. but um, the training camps were really interesting as well, quite fun. Um, as were the sort of selection camps. I met loads of people who I still know and am friends with to this day, um, not just who went on to do chemistry, but people who went on to do maths, medicine, things like that. It, it's really a great experience. I'd recommend it to anyone. That's cool. And you got a gold medal, didn't you? Yes, I did. How yes. How did you get that? How? Yeah. <laughs> well, I just uh, worked hard, looked at the content, and, you know, practiced the theory and the practical exams, and then I managed to not blow it on the day. Okay. It's not nice. much more than that, unfortunately. It's quite impressive, though. Well done. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, how would you say you got so good at chemistry? What did you do? What are any tips you could give? I mean, there's only, yeah, there's only so many tips I can give, but the most important thing, I guess, is, first off, practicing the specific type of questions and type of work that you have to do because everything comes with practice. But the other thing I can advise is learning to notice when you don't understand something and when you know you're just glossing over parts of it in your mind because you can be asked lots of questions on some area and learn how to answer them but not really know what you're talking about. And then a slightly different question comes up and you know, you don't know what you're doing because you've been slightly confused or misunderstood something the whole time. And if you can learn to notice when you don't get something, that's really the only way that you can learn to 
improve and understand these concepts and get better that way. Mm. Okay. And do you say that competing in these kind of Olympiads can help you get into top universities such as Cambridge? Uh, I'd say so, yeah. Um, obviously, it's just evidence of strong performance mm -hmm. and, you know, stuff like that. But it also helps you sort of get into the mindset of really being challenged mm -hmm. beyond what you'd get in something like an A-level course. Yeah. Because, you know, at Cambridge, at Oxford, at the top universities, there are loads and loads of people applying who've all done really well in their A-levels and their GCSEs. Yeah. And they want to pick from beyond that. Yeah. And so the selection that they'll use obviously goes beyond what you've seen before. Yeah. And if you're no, never used to doing anything harder than A-level, mm -hmm. when you get to that, you'll have, you know, you'll just be confused. You won't know how to proceed. But getting practice in with these difficult Olympiads really helps you to learn how to tackle problems which are more difficult than what you've seen before. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. And are there any books in particular you might recommend to, like, prospective chemistry students? Any books? I mean, there are dozens and dozens of chemistry textbooks that are out there. Mm. Um, I'd say try not maybe to go for the biggest, most advanced, most specialized one you can find. There are books like Clayden, which are excellent, but reading them as an A-level student, I had no idea what was going on. Um, so um, something lower level, there are books designed for first level university students. There's the chemical structure and reactivity book, of course. There are even ones, you know, lower level than that, that are still geared towards, you know, A-level students who want to push further. Mm -hmm. So that, that sort of thing. Okay. And when did you start preparing for the Olympia? Or was it not something you really prepared for? Well, I took, um, I took the upper sixth Olympiad in the lower sixth, and I did all right for a lower sixth student, but not brilliantly well. But... Um, after that, in the same year, was the lower sixth Olympiad, the C3L6, it's called. Uh, so after I'd taken the upper sixth Olympiad, I thought, thought, oh, OK, these competitions exist and it would be good to try and do really well in them. And I sort of started preparing after that. And once I'd done well in the C3L6, that put me in a prime position to think, oh, I can do well in the upper sixth Olympiad next year if I put the work in then. And I think, if I recall correctly, that's quite early on in the school year. It's sort of autumn time. Um, but I was on a sort of training general chemistry camp at the end of the summer between the lower and upper six because of my performance on the C3L6. So I learned a lot there. And I was, again, introduced to the idea that these things exist. They're interesting and I can do well in them. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I really kicked into gear to prepare for the Olympiad. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and then a bit on uh, a different note, what was your Cambridge interview like? So you applied to study natural sciences with the end specialised in chemistry. What was your interview like? So there was um, a couple of parts to my interview. There was one or two interviews, in fact, which were more focused on biology and one which was focused on chemistry. And you'll find that almost anywhere you apply. From what I understand, you'll have one interview that's chemistry focused and then some some ones which are more tangentially related to other subjects you want to study because you can't just study chemistry in first year you have to study some of the biological or physical sciences with it and the chemistry interview you know I was taken through okay you've seen this molecule before how would it react okay and then I was shown maybe a chemical or a molecule that I hadn't seen before and I was asked how would this react what compounds would it form and that was a case of applying my general knowledge of chemical principles as to what was it like, what other things that I seen that was similar to this, and therefore, how could I apply my knowledge? And a lot of the other interviews, which were biologically focused, uh, because I was taking biology as well, uh, were things like, you know, what have you learned at A-level? What are you interested in? And then they would ask questions off that. Have you read any books or whatever that you want to talk about? And then interspersed with that was jumping in with, OK, but what about this? And they tell me something that maybe I'd been taught differently at A-level because the A-level courses are incomplete or just bad. 
or something that I'd never seen before. And it's a case of, oh, okay, this is not what I already knew. This conflicts with what already, I already knew. How do I deal with new information and how do I answer? And that's what the interviews are trying to test. It's how can you cope with new information more than what you already know. Okay, great, thank you. And so those are all the main questions I had, but if there's anything you want to add about the Olympiad or uh, getting to Cambridge or anything like that, for that, please feel free to go for it. So I think the most important thing is to find what you're interested in and what you want to do. And no matter what you are interested in, what it is that you're working on, you'll always be able to find a way to build on that into something that you can make a, you know, first off take a module, then make a whole degree out of that. And that's really the most important thing is to build on what you're already interested in and to keep, you know, learning.